Hello everyone, my name is Krusty Mustard, and today what I have for you guys is a battle uh, between myself and Key Darkness Dragon. We actually battled uh, for the NPA, and I have a battle here. This is uh, week one of the NPA, uh, and I just want to share the battle with you. So, let's go. So, uh... The NPA is basically like a mixed battle challenge here. Um, so you're going to see a lot of different tiers of Pokemon. So I let off with my Sharpedo here. Uh, and I wanted to kind of get a feel for this Reuniclus. Didn't know what it wanted to do. So I watched it uh, sub here. And I was like, alright. It's a subset. Uh, it's not really anything I want to stay into. Because this Sharpedo is a little bit different. So I'm going to kick him out. And I'm going to go into my safe guy here, which is uh, Dual Blade, to absorb the Toxic. Uh, I went for a Sword Stance thinking he would switch, but he actually kind of predicted me to do that. And he used Trick, and he switches that Flame Orb that he has onto my Dual Blade, making it kind of useless offensively. But I don't want him to die yet. Um, and I think that he's maybe going to try to set up behind the sub, but he actually gets himself out of there, and he goes into the Heatran. So I'm like, eh, okay, we really need to get out of here this time. I went for the Sword Zance to try to mitigate that attack drop from the burn, but uh, I needed to get out of there. So uh, this turn, you're going to see me switch out and go into uh, probably the MVP for this match, uh, Chansey, a.k.a. Super Audino. Um... And Heatran just sets up Stealth Rocks, probably a great play on the switch there. Um, and Chansey is going to scare off this Heatran into the Keldeo. And Keldeo uh, ended up actually being a really big problem for me this match. But I kind of predicted a switch there into the Keldeo, and I hit him with Seismic Toss. And that actually does add up throughout the battle. Uh, now, so I go back into uh, Dual Blade predicting a Sacred Sword. Uh, or Secret Sword, I'm sorry, and he goes for it, doesn't work obviously, I'm Ghost Type, and then he gets out of there. Um, I'm surprised he didn't just go for Scald or something there, but apparently he wanted to save uh, the Keldeo there. So he sends in the Clef Key, and this thing, I was kind of like, I uh, don't really want to deal with this thing, I figured it was going to hit me with a Moon Blast or something like that. Uh, but it actually turns out to be a screening clef key, and I've not seen this one before. Uh, so I was a little confused as to what it was going to do. I'm just trying any attack at all. Probably could have actually gotten up a few swords dances here, uh, but I decided, eh, probably not. Not a good idea. Um, so I was, just, I was just trying to do a little bit of damage to it. It hadn't shown any recovery. Uh, so I figured it was just a screen and set and maybe a prankster set, uh, but I get out of there and I go back into my Chansey, uh, and he actually uses a weird move here. I've never seen this move competitively before. He uses, oh wait, after the foul play here, uh, he hits me with foul play, that does nothing. Uh, but then he uses Fairy Lock. I have never seen this move competitively used before. Apparently that just means nobody can run away during the next turn, which is weird. I don't know why he would trap himself in here when he can do six damage to me, but he did. And I'm just like, well, I'm just going to toss you in the air a couple more times and uh, eventually you'll die. <laughs> so um, he has one hit point left. I go into my Sharknado again, uh, and I actually take a foul play. I kind of predicted him to maybe try Fairy Lock again or something. Uh, I just knew all he had was foul play so I could take it. Uh, and this Sharpedo, you may have just noticed, is a special attacking Sharpedo. Nobody knows how to deal with this thing. It is one of the greatest things ever. It has speed boost, so it gets really fast, really quick. You see I got the speed boost there, uh, and I got the one on the switch. In comes the Lando T, and I think he thought that he could just come in and U-turn, but he actually goes for Earthquake here, which is a little weird, but... I'm like, okay, that light screen wore off. I am plus four speed right now. I'm going to just go for the ice beam and hope for the best. And it annihilates the Lando T. And that was the one thing I was super scared of, was that stupid Landorus T, because those things always end me. 
Uh, so Sharpedo is looking really good. He's gotten two KOs under his belt. He's at plus five speed. Reuniclus comes in. I don't know what he was thinking here because I actually go for the Dark Pulse and just annihilate it. Maybe he thought it was a little more defensive than that, or maybe he thought I didn't have a dark type attack, but uh, that's three KOs for Sharpedo. He has done really, really well this match. And next, we have the Mandibuzz come in, and this Mandibuzz is such a pain in the neck. I go for Ice Beam here, hoping that I can do a decent chunk of damage, and I do. I do a huge amount of damage to this thing. Uh, he actually goes for the Toxic, putting me under a timer, which is obnoxious. I hate having a timer on my Pokemon. Sharpedo right now is in a point where I can't actually switch him out and switch him back in with the Stealth Rocks to, you know, take another attack. And I'm like, well, maybe he will predict me to go for the Ice Beam again, and he'll switch into the Heatran. So I actually go for Scald on the switch here, but he does the super safe play. And he actually goes into the Keldeo. So the Keldeo takes the Scald and I'm like, come on, burn it, burn it, burn it, burn it, burn it. No burn. Uh, and I'm dead uh, because of the Life Orb and the Toxic damage building up. So Sharpedo did amazing this round. Um, couldn't have asked for a better outcome for that. So I send in my Sceptile just to scare this thing away. I'm like, okay. He's not going to stay into a Leaf Storm. I'm going to go for Focus Blast on the Switch. He goes into the Heatran, and I'm like, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And I missed the Focus Blast. Of course. That was one of the biggest turning points in this battle right there was that miss. And I was just so upset at that. But I go back into Chansey, and I'm like, I can tank whatever this guy wants to throw at me. He throws a Lava Plume my way. Chansey eats that up for breakfast because this is a fully defensive, fully or fully special defense, fully HP Eviolite Chansey. This thing cannot go down to special attacks at all. There's no way to take it down. So, uh, he actually does it again. He gets the burn. I actually just went for Heal Bell to get the burn off of my Duo Blade just so I could swap him in without getting burn damage. He goes for another Lava Plume. He actually gets a crit, but it didn't matter because I hit the Soft Boiled. Um, and Chansey's just like, well, I don't even care anymore. Uh, so, he stays in. He's still going for these Lava Plumes, I think maybe trying to get a burn again or something, but I'm going to just throw him up in the air with some Seismic Toss. Uh, Seismic Toss is great on a Chansey because it just does so much damage. Uh, I think he misclicked there for the Stealth Rock. I went for Seismic Toss again, and I bring him actually down to half. So I think he has... Uh, either just under 200 or exactly 200 HP. So in comes the Mandibuzz. I went for the Seismic Toss again just because whatever came in would take 50 damage and I'm cool with that. So Mandibuzz is down in the yellow again. I know he's gonna roost uh, because this thing is obnoxious but I'm like you know what I'm gonna put this thing on a timer. I'm going to Toxic this turn and make sure this thing does not uh, stick around for much longer. So I Toxic it, I get it uh, a nice little timer on there, it's not gonna be uh, sticking around forever anymore, but actually I find out that this thing is very lastable. I gotta say, Mandibuzz is now one of the Pokemon I'm taking a look at because this thing is a beast. Uh, he actually goes for his own Toxic, but I don't know why exactly he did that. He knows that I have the Heal Bell, um, and I'm totally going to use it. Um, but I actually went for Seismic Toss there. Uh, just to get a little bit of damage. Uh, I find out what this Mandibuzz's set is here. Um, it actually has revealed the Roost. It has revealed the Toxic. Um, and it's about to reveal its actual attacking move. I don't know what its last move is. I'm assuming that must have been like Air Slash or something like that. Um... I actually went for the Toxic, predicting the switch out um, into the Keldeo. Uh, I was hoping to get that Keldeo poison, because that would have definitely uh, swung the battle in my favor. If I could get rid of that Keldeo, I was good, because the Mandibuzz was on a timer and the Heatran could not get past me. He actually reveals he has foul play, which, again, does not matter to me in the slightest, because Chansey does not care about foul play. It has like zero attack. So, um, Chansey here 
is looking pretty solid. He's going to go for a Toxic again. I'm going to go for a Soft Boiled. It does get a little stally here, but at the same time, uh, I'm just kind of waiting for him to whittle down in Toxic damage. And he's going to die to Toxic a lot sooner than I am. Uh, because I have Soft Boiled, I have Heal Bell. Uh, I'm good to go. So I'm just kind of waiting for this Mandibus to, di to die. Um... And I'm kind of just predicting when he's going to switch into the Keldeo. And I'm like, mm, he might switch in this time, but I'm going to go for the Heal Bell just to be safe. And he actually switches in the Keldeo. I could have gotten some great damage on this thing. But instead, I was kind of stupid about it. And I went for the Heal Bell. I could have made a really good prediction here. But I decided to take the safe play. So I get Autono out of there. I'm predicting the Secret Sword again. So I go back into Duo Blade. And I predicted very much correctly because he goes for Secret Sword and it doesn't do a thing to me. Uh, so he gets out of there. He goes back into Heatran, I believe. Nope, he actually goes back into the Mandibuzz. Um, now, Dual Blade is not super useful for me right now. He's The only reason I'm actually keeping him around is because he's the only counter for the Keldeo. Um... But I know the Roost is coming here. I know that the Mandibuzz is going to Roost. And I'm like, you know what? This battle's not going anywhere. I'm going to get out of here. And I'm actually going to go into my Tyranitar. Uh, now, Tyranitar, for me, is a Mega. I cannot not Mega Evolve it. I don't know why you wouldn't. But I have to Mega Evolve this thing the first turn that I come in. Uh, and Tyranitar for me is a very good physical attacker so uh i'm running dragon dance on it i'm running earthquake i'm running iron head and i'm actually running crunch and i that was probably the biggest mistake bringing this thing i should have brought it with uh rock slide or stone edge but i'm mega and i know my defense is awesome right now so i don't have to worry about anything i'm kind of worried about the toxic but i go for the dragon dance just to set up a little bit i'm figuring plus one speed, plus one attack, this thing's not going to be able to touch me. And it goes for the toxic. And I'm like, alright, that's fine. I'm totally going to take this thing down uh, next turn. I'm going to hit it super, super hard with a physical type move, and it's going to go down. Or so I thought. Uh, I hit this thing. I, like I said, I do not have Stone Edge, so I go for the next best thing, which is actually Iron Head, because uh, Dark type attacks would not be super or would be not very effective, and it does under half. I was actually really surprised by that because this is a physical attacking, fully attack invested Tyranitar with a plus one, and it still did less than half. So Mandibuzz just has an insane defense. Um, I really was not predicting that. This thing is very lastable. I should actually build one of these for my off uh, off teams as well. But I get out of there, I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna be able to do damage to this before uh, foul play. So, I go into Chansey again, and I actually did not see this coming. I predicted him to go for the foul play. He actually goes back into the Heatran, and I'm like, all right, I'm fine with that. Um, I should have actually stayed in though. Had I stayed in, I could have come in next turn uh, and hit it with an Earthquake and got rid of the Heatran. But in comes the Keldeo, and I go for Seismic Toss, uh, just because Heatran can't do anything to me, and I'm looking okay on health. I almost kill it, almost kill it, don't get it quite out of the way, but I go back into uh, Dual Blade, predicting the Secret Sword, or just kind of safe playing the Secret Sword. I figured by now he's learned it, so he's going to do something else, and he actually goes for Scald, which was pretty smart on his, uh, on his end. Uh, but that death foddering actually gives me a free switch into my septile. Now the septile is a power or a white herb uh, leaf storm set. Uh, so I actually I'm just going straight for it. I don't care what comes in. I'm going for leaf storm here. Uh, and leaf storm's awesome because it's a 140 base power attack. It lowers my special attack by two stages, but I have that white herb. And I get an Unburden boost, so I'm actually at about 230 base speed right now. So I am incredibly, incredibly fast. Um, and there's not much he's going to be able to do to me. So I stay in, and I actually go for Dragon Pulse, predicting him to, I don't know, take a little bit more damage from a special attack. He actually goes for the Roost, and I'm just like, oh, come on, alright. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to go for one of my most powerful attacks. I'm going to go for Focus Blast. I'm going to hit it, and maybe it'll do a decent amount of damage. Maybe I'll get a crit. Who knows? Uh, and maybe it'll go down, because the toxic damage is whittling it down. So I go for po Focus Blast, and I miss again. Two misses from this thing. It did not hit a single Focus Blast this whole match. And I was just, I was so upset. I'm so sick of missing that move. It's a 70% accurate move, and I missed 100% of them. Ugh. Oh well. Anyway, so I'm like, okay, we're poisoned. This is not good. Uh, I don't really want to stay in and accumulate toxic damage, so I'm going to get out of here, and I'm going to go back into Chansey, because Chansey totally walls this thing. Uh, I predicted him to go for the foul play again, and he actually does this time. Um, so he goes for the foul play, does absolutely nothing. Uh, and then he decides to kind of stick around for a little bit. Uh, now I'm predicting the Keldeo to come in. Uh, because this Mandibuzz is starting to really rack up the toxic damage. And I'm like, well, the Keldeo is going to come in. I'm just going to spam toxic a little bit. Um, so I start spamming toxic. And I think he knows what my plan is to toxic the... Uh, Keldeo and then keep him in for a turn and then have him die um, and he just kind of keeps staying in here going for foul play going for roost uh, letting that toxic damage add up and I'm just going for toxic and then I'm like you know what I don't think that Keldeo had much health left I think it has under 50 so I'm just gonna go for the seismic toss so I just start going for the seismic toss here and he goes for the roost. The toxic damage is really, really adding up. He's at, like, I think 8. 8 or 9 out of 16 now. Like, it's it's really starting to tear into his mandibuzz here. And uh, he's just he's not enjoying it at all. So he needs to get into that Keldeo. Um, so he gets out of there. He actually goes straight into the Keldeo. Or no, he goes into the Heatran. I'm sorry. He goes into the Heatran here. Um, I'm assuming predicting me to, I don't know, I don't know what he was predicting here, but, uh, he goes for the flash cannon, which is gonna do absolutely nothing to me, uh, and it doesn't. I go for soft boil just to get my health back up, and then I'm gonna start going for seismic tosses again, uh, but this is where he makes the mistake, he actually withdraws the heatran, uh, and brings in the Keldeo to take a seismic toss. And that's going to take out Keldeo, and that's actually uh, going to determine where he forfeits. Um, the safer thing to have done probably would have been to leave that Heatran and let it get killed, and then come in. But he's actually going to forfeit this turn, uh, and I'm going to take the win. So it was a really good match. Uh, Key Darkness Dragon, thank you very much for the battle. Uh, I will have another one of these up, uh, hopefully by next week. Next week will be... Uh, week two against Tesla Mouse. Uh, so I will see you guys then. My name's Krusty Mustard, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!